Here's how Eternal sets up Galactus in the MCU. After 13 years and dozens of movies, it may finally be time for one of Marvel's most iconic villains to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And this time, he's not going to appear as a weird cloud, at least we hope he's not. We are, of course, talking about Galactus, the giant purple people eater himself who travels around the Marvel Universe chomping on planets like they're blood-filled gushers to satiate his seemingly bottomless appetite. And while Galactus previously appeared in the pre-MCU film Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, which was legally a movie, now the massive Marvel villain seems closer than ever to making his MCU debut. With a Fantastic Four movie from Spider-Man No Way Home director John Watts on the horizon, it's only a matter of time. And now, according to an interview with Eternals writers Ryan and Kaz Furpo, the door is open for Galactus to appear as soon as an Eternal sequel. Now we're going to break it all down, including how Galactus can and should join the MCU, and what clues are already present in just a moment. If you prefer to read all about it, Eric Diaz has you covered over on Nerdist.com. But to talk about this, we do have to spoil some elements of Eternals, so if you haven't seen the movie yet and you're worried about that sort of thing, leave now before you get heated. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, shall we? Now, in case you've been living under a Ben Grimm, allow me to explain who Galactus is. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in 1965's Fantastic Four 48, Galactus is an ancient and immensely powerful cosmic being. He used to be a space explorer until he unexpectedly survived the heat death of the universe and merged with the sentience of the multiverse to become a brand new entity that would become a devourer of worlds. And that's basically what he does. Galactus travels the galaxy feeding on the energy of planets until they're not more than empty husks. And it's nothing personal for the people who live there. He's just a certified hungry boy, and he even sends heralds like the Silver Surfer in advance to warn people their home's about to become a Midnight Gasnactus. And honestly, we could spend an entire video just breaking down his complicated comic book history, but that's what you need to know for now. In a new interview with the Direct, Eternal's co-writer Kaz Furpo spoke about Galactus and how Eternal sets the stage for this planet-munching space god to join the MCU. Furpo said, Galactus is an amazing, amazing character and villain. We are, you know, obviously setting the stage for intergalactic cosmic megalith confrontations, especially when you kill a space god, and then the space god comes and kidnaps you and plans to judge Earth. I think the door is very much open for world-eating villains. Furpo is, of course, referencing the ending of Eternals, where after forming a Unimind to stop the emergence of Tiamat, the Dreaming Celestial, Cersei turns the nascent space god into a massive marble statue. And although the Eternals save the world in the process, it leads to three of their number who remain on Earth, Cersei, Fastos, and Kingo, who technically didn't kill anybody, being whisked away into the furthest reaches of space by a very displeased Arishem, the leader of the nigh-omnipotent Celestials. Now, one of the film's post credit scenes revolves around Thena, Makari, and Druig having a chance meeting with Pip the Troll and Eros, a fellow Eternal and the brother of Thanos, who knows exactly where their friends have been taken. And as we've speculated in our post credits breakdown and our Easter egg breakdown videos, they were most likely taken to the World Forge, which feels like a version of the exclusion in the MCU. Now, in the comics, the exclusion was an Earth-based resurrection chamber for deceased Eternals to come back to life, and a prison of sorts for decommissioned Eternals to remain in stasis forevermore. With the film's introduction of the World Forge and how the MCU has tweaked the Eternals comic book origins, it makes sense they would use this particular piece of source material. And regardless, the mission to reunite with their dead and missing friends in the eventual Eternal sequel, Eternals, will be front and center. But what does that mean for Galactus? Well, Furpo had some additional comments that raised eyebrows about how this purple people eater could make his appearance. There's definitely conversations about these post credit sequences about who we're introducing, where we're going. Galactus is one of those iconic figures of the Marvel Universe that we're excited to see. But sometimes I think you leave yourself open. You leave these doors open and who knows what's happening in number two. Maybe you're too busy saving a Celestial from Galactus that you end up incurring his wrath. Anything's possible. Now, I know what you might be thinking, what's the difference between Galactus and the Celestials anyway? Well, Galactus actually predated the six singularities, the Big Bang connected to the Infinity Stones that essentially kickstarted the Marvel Universe as we know it. And he survived that cosmic event to be reborn as essentially this agent of chaos and entropy in a brand new cosmos. While the Celestials travel the universe performing experiments and basically treating sentient life forms like they're Neopets all while they're implanting eggs in various planetary bodies, Galactus is just hunger personified. He travels the galaxy to consume, consume, consume. 
And Furpo's comments are particularly illuminating when you take them in the context of what happens at the end of Eternals, and also what we know to be true about Galactus. Over the course of the movie, we know the Eternals helped mankind to develop to a point where they were able to generate vast amounts of energy, both through living beings and technological advancements. So if Earth had enough energy to germinate and hatch a celestial egg, you better believe it's basically a water and human-covered Ferrero Rocher for a massive energy-hungry being like Galactus. With the Celestials like Arishem off scolding their hot robots, that leaves Earth largely undefended, especially because it sounds like Arishem needs to watch several millennia of game tape and memories to determine whether humans are worth keeping around or not. And while he may not have been the father of the year by any stretch of the imagination, Ego the Living Planet from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was actually one of the Marvel Universe's best defenses against Galactus. Because in the comics, Ego found himself the target of Galactus' legendary appetite and teamed up with the likes of Thor and the Wanderer, survivors of Galactus' previous meals, to drive the Devourer of Worlds away. Now, this basically kicked off a blood feud between Galactus and Ego, with the latter scheming with the elders of the universe to murder Galactus. So, in short, these two had a history, and now that Ego's been reduced to dust by Peter Quill and the rest of the Guardians, one of the MCU's biggest bulwarks against Galactus has been removed. In the wake of the blip being undone in Avengers Endgame, massive amounts of energy have been restored to planets all across the universe, especially on Earth. And with a massive space god like Galactus setting his sights on an energy-rich world like Earth, it would take the combined efforts of not just the Avengers, but basically every other super-powered being we've met so far in the MCU to stop him. Or maybe there's a much simpler answer to this, as posited by Nerdist's own Eric Diaz. Given Kevin Feige in Marvel Studios' propensity to condense and simplify certain aspects of this sprawling Marvel Comics mythos, they could simply recast Galactus as the creature the Celestial sick on planets they deem unworthy of preservation. As we explained in our post-credits and Easter egg breakdowns, the Celestials often return to planets they visited previously in events known as Celestial Hosts. During the fourth Celestial Host in the comics, they returned to Earth to decide whether or not our planet was worthy of preservation, and suffice to say, things got awfully messy awfully quickly. And while the Celestials are more than capable of destroying planets by themselves, having a living, breathing Hoover vacuum of an entity like Galactus would add a sense of drama and scale to their plans. Now, regardless, with characters like the Dweller in Darkness and Shang-Chi, the Celestials and Eternals, and rumors of Elder Gods like Shuma Goroth and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the stage is absolutely being set for cosmic-level threats like Galactus in the MCU. And with Thanos out of the picture for the time being, let's face it, the MCU is in dire need of another space-faring purple villain. So the question is not if Marvel's Purple People Eater will join the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but when he will join it. Now, of course, as with everything, only time will tell and we'll be waiting with bated breath for any additional clues and updates about how Galactus will first rear his ugly head. In the meantime, though, tell us what do you think of this news? Do you want to see Galactus in the MCU? And how do you think he should first appear? We were hoping Dr. Richards could tell us. Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like and share this video with your friends, subscribe for even more awesome video content, and hit that little notification bell so you never miss a thing. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.